and this morning uh, I have taken the message uh, again uh, from let's all turn to Second uh, Chronicles chapter 14. We're going to continue uh, from last week. Okay, Second Chronicles, and I hope you will all have your uh, Bible with you, right? And then uh, because we're going to refer to some portion of Scripture, and thus it will help us to to digest well when we all read together uh, the scripture portions, okay? And so, you'll find the Old Testament, the Second Chronicles chapter 14, and I'm going to read for you verses 8 to the end, uh, at the end of uh, the chapter, right? Chapter 14, verses beginning 8, and I read to you. Now Asa had an army of 300,000 from Judah, bearing large shields and spears, and 280,000 from Benjamin, bearing shields and wielding bows, all of them were valiant warriors. Now Zerah, the Ethiopian, came out against them with an army of million men and 300 chariots, and he came to Maresha. So as Asa went out to meet him, they drew up in battle formation in the valley of Zephna near Meresha. Asa called to the Lord his God and said, Lord, there is no one besides you to help us in the battle between the powerful and of those who have no strength. So help us, O Lord of our God, for we trust in you and in your name have come against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Let, let not a man prevail against you. So the Lord routed the Ethiopians before Asa and before Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. And Asa and the people who were with him pursued them as far as Ger, and as many Ethiopians fell, and they could not recover, for they, are, they were shattered before the Lord, before his army, and they carried away very much plunder. Now this is the word that we just read. Now, I just wanted to recap back what we saw last Sunday. Now, we saw Asa, who came from his father Abijam, who did evil. But when Asa took over the throne, he wanted to put right because he was a God-fearing man. He was a righteous man. And thus, he remembered how God was good to him. So first, we see what a righteous life he was leading. He was a very righteous man, and being righteous, he was doing the right thing. And so the second thing that he do was he did the good thing. What is the good thing he did was he began to cleanse his house, his nation, of all the idolatry that was brought in by his mother, by his father, you know, and, and brought into the land. And we see there were different kinds of of foreign altars as well as uh, high places and and sacred pillars and even the goddess of Ashara, all right, where it is said to be the mother god for seventy other gods. Such was uh, the situation when Asa took over, and he was bold. He was very bold because he knows the Lord cannot take it, having any idolism in our homes. All right, to have an idolism, you know, we cannot serve the Lord and we cannot serve the devil, right? And so it was, so he knew it, right? You either be here or you either be there. And so he said to himself, he need to cleanse. And he cleansed the entire land. He cleansed the entire land. He cleansed his home, his entire nation. And we see the benefit of his cleansing. We see how God blessed the land. There was peace. All right, they had peace all round, and, and and how the Lord was blessing them because He removed every of idolatry that was an impediment for the faith of Him, and so likewise in our own life, we need to remove idolatry that is in our lives, idolism that we have worshipped, that need to be removed. If you want to see God's blessings. God's healing, God's power into your life, then you have to get this done. There's no two way about it. There's no compromise with God. And thus, Asa did it. 
he was bold though his mother was there all right despite his father's passed away but his mother was still there but he removed her as a queen mother okay because she was party to that idolatry mm-hmm. and thus he was such a bold man that he did it for the lord and we see the goodness been so righteous he was and you see how god blessed him much and so this is something important lesson that we need to learn my friend that removing idolatries from our life is very important and it's very important to see the deliverance of the lord in our life and we remove all these idolatries it could be anything that is comes between you and our father our god in our worship thirdly we saw that he commanded that judah that they would seek and observe the commandments of the law and the word of god now this is the third thing that he did something very right and good he told the people all right today to observe the law the word of god we have to observe the word of god and to seek the living god and this is something that as a king they have come forth out and says we need to now seek the living lord at the same time we need to observe the word of god all right we see the word of god as manual in our life and it's so important in our life without the word of god if you would leave your home without the word of god reading and meditating and praying friends you will never find god in your entire day right so we see that and so we see how uh asa was able to tell the entire nation let us observe the lord and by observing the lord and by giving importance to the word of god what we see we saw success we saw how they were prospered they they prospered very much and there were peace all around they had peace everywhere and they prospered and the word of god tells us very much eh, in verse 7 right and the last part of it he was given rest on every side and they built and prospered why he said it the right thing he did the right thing he walked with god being righteous right he was very right man a righteous man then he removed everything that was against the lord which was impediment to god against god and so he removed them all completely and cleansed the land and and then finally he told them to follow the law the word of god right the law and what we see end of it we see that there were peace in every side as they began to build fortify cities and they prospered they prospered and so this we need to be aware right we need to be aware that when we come before the lord uh, as we come before the lord we must have be very clear in this matter that we have to cleanse it right and walk with god and we will continue to be blessed in him now this morning's meditation i as i just read the word uh, in verse 8 onwards yeah? now we see that king asa summons the power of god he summon the power of god and we see that he when the time of crisis the time of crisis in the time of uh, need what he did he did something very very important in the time of crisis now we just read in verse in verse 9 no? uh, and 8 Asa had an army from Judah was 300,000 and with large shields and spears and Benjamin tribe they had 280,000 so a total of 580,000 soldiers he had but in contrast to the Ethiopian Zera now something about Zera now Zera is is this is his common name but his actual name is known as also Khan one all right who was said to be a pharaoh now his army was very much different from the army of Asa like what 
they had specialists all right they had specially trained against uh, men with them okay now you let's read verse 9 nanzera the ethiopian came out against them with an army of million men and 300 chariots and he came to merasha okay now this people the ethiopians which are modern uh, time now is southern egypt and sudan and northern ethiopia this way and they are known as the kush or the kushites all right the kushites or the kush or the other name for the ethiopians so we see them that they are specialists that means in today's term they are known as commandos and they were in millions commandos are normally not much people huh? it's about 10 to 15 commandos but here you have about million commandos in comparison to Asa's 580,000 people and Asa knew that the Kushites can easily overrun uh, the army of uh, Asa and so what he did in the moment of crisis you know, in a moment of crisis friends something that I want to share with you here we see in verse 7 in the same chapter he built all right and he enjoyed peace and rest on every side and then what he was he prospered he prospered that's what the word says now the devil, the devil doesn't like it you know whenever god is blessing us much whenever god is keeping us going and you know blessing us much the devil is never never happy Satan is never, never happy. Look at Job. Everything was going on well, fine for him. He was so blessed. He was so rich. He had children. He had everything for him. But what happened? The devil came and said, Oh, you have blessed him so much. Because you blessed him so much, of course he will follow you. Just give it to me. All right? And I will, I will do what I need to do, that he will curse you. And God said, Go ahead. We can do it. But he can't touch, touch his life. Likewise, my friend, when everything is going fine, like in King Asa, everything was so good and wonderful and in a great, the devil came through the Ethiopian army. They wanted to wage war. And look at the situation here. The Ethiopians or the Kushites were one million people of commandos, of uh, specialized trained people. And compounded with that, they came out with 300 chariots that you find in verse 9. Huh? They had 300 chariots. Now, chariots which King Hesa never had. And chariots can overrun. And chariots can, you know, run with six horses, four horses, sometimes can be one horses. And you can men, in, you know, you can have six men, ten men in it, and they can slaughter people as they're riding through. Such a powerful army it was. And Hesa knew he was helpless and he is outnumbered. Asa knew he was outnumbered. Compared to million, he had only half a million. And he was outnumbered. So, in the time of trouble, what he did? Uh, what did he do? He called upon God. It's a serious thing. Eh? He called upon God in prayer. Yes, my friend, prayer. Now, many of us will think in a moment of reality with all the armies outside there, they're waiting in the, in the plain battle for, ready for battle. What would a king would do? He would be sitting with his army generals. He would be sitting with his commandos. And he would have a plan, a strategy, how to overcome this war, how to, to face this war. This is what our normal mind will tell us. But what happens? King Asa decided to go to God in prayer. It sounds so stupid, am I right? It sounds so nonsense. Here there is reality, there's armies is waiting to attack and coming all out and this man is saying, I'm going to pray. And he's praying. Right? And many a times, my friend, when crisis sets in, right, we tend to look at men. We tend to run to men. Whenever a crisis, a problem that sets in, we tend to go towards some people, you know, to find help. Right? I will tell you, I know an incident in one church. 
a Christian and uh, he goes to church and he had a freak accident. He had a freak accident mm -hmm. and that accident took him some time and there was extreme pain that he was enduring. So he was having him more and more pain and he you know and, and he's gone to the doctors and the doctors have given him painkillers and done everything and finally one day he couldn't bear the pain. He called his children and he shouted at them, Take me to a bomo. Christian, huh? Uh, Christian goes to church, Bible believing, read the word of God. Look when when pain sets in. It could be anything. Here in this case this man's pain sets in and somebody came and told him you know, go and see uh, Bomo. Uh, Sometimes it's like that. When we have lost hope, when we have lost hope and negativity sets into it, anyone who tells you to go and see this person, go and this priest, you go and see that fellow, you go and see this Bomo, we tend to go. Right? This is what the problem, and that's why we are defeated today. And Asa knew he could have gone, all right, to, and sat down with his army general and said, let's See, because we must be mindful the Benjamin uh, tribe is one of the most valiant warriors huh? in the scripture we have read it. Benjamin tribes are the very bravest people and they have overran the Philistines a number of times. And we see this, he could have just depended on, on the Benjamite uh, tribe and says and talk to them, let's plan this out. No, he went to God. He was in a situation, he was in a very tight situation. In a very tight situation, he went to God. So when crisis was setting in, he took the right direction, he went into prayer. Now, Asa's prayer had three levels. His prayer was three levels, and this is where we can learn something. Three levels of prayer that he summoned the power of God. Okay, let's see the first one. Now let's look at verse 11 of uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Keep your Bibles with you. Huh? We're going to turn a few verse, uh, chapters. Now Asa called to the Lord his God and says, Lord, there is no one besides you to help us in the battle between the powerful and those who have no strength. Okay, this is the first level we, we see here. He was reaching out to God and he said, the God, you're the only one we can turn to. No man. Not to lawyers. Not to the engineers. Not to the pilots. Not to the doctors. All right? Not even to, to any armies. Whatever, Lord, we are turning to you. This is faith, my friend. Awesome faith. Uh, this is an awesome faith. If only we can practice this. We can see how God will bring. We're going to see the end result of this three level of prayer. And we're going to see how God worked in his life when he came before the Lord in, you know, and, and he employed this three level. The first level he says, Lord, we have no one else. We have no one else, only you to turn to. We have no one to turn to. You know, today, when Christ is said in, you know, as I told you, we will turn to people. We turn to, you know, we go far and wide. But Asa turned to God. And he confessed it and he says, Lord, that you are the only one we can turn to. What does the scripture say when we come to Christ? What does the scripture say when we are in with Jesus? Let us all turn to the book of Romans. In the New Testament, let's all turn to Romans, chapter 8. Romans, chapter 8. Okay, let me read you verse 34. Romans, chapter 8, verse 34. Who is, who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who is also intercedes for us. The word intercedes. Huh? Okay. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulations, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? 
okay who can separate us from christ when the day you acknowledge jesus as your savior my friend the day that you have accepted christ jesus as your lord and savior okay remember this the lord comes into you he abides into us and the day we open our heart and say lord jesus come into my life come into my heart and be my savior and lord and king and my my and be my lord and master he comes and when he comes it says yes who can we who can ever separate you from the love of christ right no tribulation no distress no persecution no famine no nakedness trail or sword anything or anything for that matter okay let's continue verse 37 but in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us look at this word underscore this word we in all these things we overwhelmingly can conquer through him who loved us friends when we have christ with us we have the power of god that's it all right we have the power of god let's continue to read verse 38 for i'm convinced that neither death nor life no angels no principalities no the things present no the things to come no powers no height no depth no any other created things will able to separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus nothing nothing can separate us and so we knew the omnipotent omnipresent omniscient god that we have all powerful god all knowing god and we have him with us and we need to turn to him we need to turn to him and when we turn to him you will see the result right remember my friends nothing in this universe is outside god's control there's nothing in this world in this universe is outside god's control nothing everything is in god's control So we need to understand this. Now we see a man in this in the uh in the life of David. Okay, let's all turn to Psalms. Okay, Psalms chapter 5. Now Psalms chapter 5 we call this the lament. Okay, lament of David. All right, during his bad time that he was experiencing, yeah. he was having a bad time but we do not know what was this cause uh, was his bad time but in chapter 5 of psalms right we find look at this first verse we see his lamentation give ear to my words o lord consider my groaning we do not know what it is out he hit the sound of my cry for help and my king my god for to you i pray okay this is it David when he was ever having struggles and pain and you know David knew where to turn to and David was always he had this characteristic whenever that he was having struggles and pain he turned to God he turned to God and he tells the Lord in you know in beginning in his psalms he tells the Lord Lord give ear to my mourning and groaning all right my pain is is enormous right and i'm crying for help my king my god for you to you i pray all right in the same chapter 5 we look at verse 11 but let all who take refuge in me in you be glad and let them ever sing for joy and may you not sh- shelter them for those who love you your name may exalt in you hey though david knew has got a problem a serious real problem before him but he can say positive words he said lord in all who take refuge in me will be glad whoever runs to jesus will be glad okay, that's the first thing and let them sing for joy okay one who comes to you take shelter all right in you will be a refuge and be glad and they will sing for joy and those you love you would exalt in you so we see david even when he had crisis when there was crisis set into him he turned to god how many of us have this habit 
when a crisis comes into our life, we turn to God. Do we really turn to God? You know why today cases of depression is increasing? Today we see the de depression cases in Malaysia, particularly after this uh, COVID-19, as of last year. It reportedly pretty high that people are going into depressive mood. And not only that, high number, pretty high number, as I have mentioned this to you before, high number of people are committing suicide, suicidal, because they can't meet ends meet. They don't know where to turn to. They have come to a dead end. <clears throat> they have come to a dead end, so they do not know where to turn to. So friends, how many of us are on this, this stage? Just like King Asa, he came to a dead end. He had million men out there. He has got only half a million here. They have chariots. He had no chariots. He knew he's going to be a loser. So what he did, he could have gone into or he could have fled. He could have ran, ran away all right, to save his old soul. But he didn't. He had the right direction. He turned to God. If only these people who are in the depressive moods, and those who are committing suicide only can turn to the living Father. He's there to help us. He's there to hear us. He, he, he will, you know, He's our refuge. He's our refuge. So however the situation, however the complex the, the, the matter may be, friends, it is good like King Asa to go to God and tell the Lord, Lord, you're the only one that I depend upon. No one else. No one else. You don't turn to men. Men will say something today and tomorrow they'll turn against you. Or they will not be able to fulfill it. That's men. But when we go to God, when we ask Him, right, He will provide. Remember in prayer, there's three things okay, which I normally tell you. It's like a traffic light. You have the, the green light, Right, the, the green light, the red light, and the ember in the middle. Okay, now red light we stop. Ember ready to go, uh, or ready to stop. Green go. Now, in prayer, the Lord sometimes gives you great, great light to tell you, Not now, this is not the time. Okay, but we get despondent. Right, why, why I prayed and God, you have not given me. We go. Wait, the, the red light will turn to green. Then the ember is, the Lord says, not now, you have to wait a bit. Okay, you have to wait a bit. Alright, and uh, you'll be soon. Then the third one is green light. When we pray, the Lord gives you green light to go. So in prayer, there are three things that we need to know and we need to mature in this. Sometimes something that you pray, God may not want to give you. And He knows the best for you. And here, we know in any situation that we come into, any situation like in King Asa, he came to a point. So the first level, he went to God and he told the Lord, Lord, you are the only one that I have. Huh? You are the only one that I have and I have no one to turn to except you. All right? He just says, look at verse, go back to chapter 14, huh? Second Chronicles, he says, Lord, there is no one besides you to help. That is a faithful word. The army is outside there, waiting. And he says, Lord, you are the only one beside no one to help us. So that's the first level of prayer he put in. Now let's go to the second level of prayer that Asa put in. Now again, we look at verse 11 again. Right? He says, uh, look at the middle of the verse. Huh? You to help us in the battle between the powerful and those who have no strength. So help us. Asa expressed his helplessness here. He expressed his helplessness here. And he said, we have no strength in us. They are very powerful. They are very powerful out there. True. Asa had this reality in his mind 
there were a million commandos outside. And 300 chariots can overrun them anytime, anywhere. And he knew it. And he told them, Lord, come and help us. We are helpless right now. Friends, money cannot buy you happiness. Money cannot buy you life. You can have all the life you can. You can have everything. But when you don't have life is not in your hand. It's in the hands, the hands of the Lord. So when the moment of crisis, my friend, it is not power, it's not money, it's not influence can help us. Right? It can help you to certain time, to a certain level, but not. However, great you can be, however great you can be, you can have initials before your name, initials behind your name, all these are nothing until we learn to humble like King Asa humbled. A powerful king, Asa, humbled before God and says, Lord, help us. Lord, help us. What a very simple, you know, sometimes people have this pride. They have this pride in them that they are unable, you know, why should I get help from God? Why should I go and get help from these people or that people? We need to understand this. When you humble, you will see how God exalts you. I wanted to turn to the book of Numbers in the go before the Old Testament, the book of Numbers, chapter 12. Chapter 12. I'll read you one, verses 1 to 4. Chapter 12 of Numbers, verses 1 to 4. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married for the for he had married a Cushite woman and they said he was the Lord as the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses as he not spoken through us as well and the Lord heard it was three now Moses was a very humble and more than any man who was on the face of this earth Moses was a very humble man among anyone in the, in the face of this earth, okay? Then suddenly, verse 4, the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, you three come out to, to the tent of meeting. So the three of them came out. Now what happened? Here Miriam, the sister of uh, Moses, began to, to, to condemn Moses. You mean to say only God speaks to you, uh, and not doesn't speak to us, uh, all right? That kind of grumbling and coming against them, and then Moses was a humble man. He was humble. He did not fight. You know, he did not put up a fight with them. He was humble. And he let God. And what happened? What was the result? The humility of, of, of Moses, right? We see what was the result. Look at verse 10. When the cloud had been drawn from over the tent, behold... Miriam was leprous as white as the snow. As Aaron turned towards Miriam, behold, she was leprous. It was Miriam became a leper. Right? You 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 hit a man, all right, who was with God. He knows what he's doing. He was called by God. Why you question him? Right? You he was called by God to take the people out of Israelite. What happened here? They began to murmur. They began to murmur against him. They began to question him, question his authority. And finally, what happened? She became leprous. Right? The result, when people come against you, my friend, let me tell you this. Do not revenge them. The Lord will take, give him the room. Huh? Give him the room, he will avenge. You don't have revenge. That's not our work. We don't go for eye for an eye. We don't go for a tooth for a tooth. Okay? Let the Lord take. And, and, and Moses was very humble. He did not fight with them. He did not question them. He did not say anything much. But he did. Quietly. And the Lord took over the whole situation. And the Lord answered. Now in Psalms 37. Let's turn to it. Psalms 37.
When a person who humbles, okay, when a person who humbles, what is the result? What is the result? Do you know humility? Yeah? When a person humbles before the Lord, few things, three blessings. One, look at verse 11 of Psalms 37. The humble will inherit the land. Okay, the humble will inherit the land. It's a blessing the Lord will give you for your humility. Secondly, will delight. Joy, happiness. Who doesn't want happiness? Who doesn't want joy? Okay. Who doesn't want joy? Who doesn't want happiness? And here you say the Lord will you give you, you will inherit the land. Secondly, delight. And thirdly, abundant prosperity. Not just prosperity, abundant prosperity. Now, when, when we talk about prosperity, we always look immediately at dollars and signs. Not necessarily. Yes, it is. You still, the Lord will give you finances. Finances, all right. He also, and He'll prosper you in whatever you're doing. If you're doing a project in your work, the Lord will prosper you there. If you're doing some work in your company, you will be prospering there. Whatever you're doing something, you will prosper. And this is the prosperity. And a humble person is blessed with the inheritance of a land, will be delighted. At the same time, he will receive abundant prosperity. This humility. This is purely humility. Huh? And in, we see in James chapter 4, verse 10. Let's turn to it. James chapter 4, in the last end of the New Testament in chapter 4 underscore this verse, verse 10 humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you humble yourself in the presence of the Lord and he will exalt you yes. you will have to humble yourself in the Lord I can tell you Surely and willfully, the Lord will exalt you. Like what happened in the case of Moses? He humbled. He did not fight. He did not give a fight to them and he said, you know, you must do this. No, he left it to the Lord. And we see here, King Asa was totally dependent on the Lord. In, you know, and he was so humble. Friends, it sounds crazy. In reality, you find there were people with, with horses, with chariots, with specially trained fellows are waiting there to overrun here. But here a man overcome them by humbleness, humility and by prayer. <coughs> that is faith. That is faith. Right? The Esther has taught us a lesson. Of having... You know, humility and telling the Lord, Lord, help me. We are helpless. Help us, Lord. And we are simply helpless. And that was his second level of prayer. The third level. Also, we will see in verse, going back to Second Chronicles chapter 14, we go back to verse 11. Right? Now look at this, the middle portion of that. O oh Lord, O oh God, for we trust in you, and in your name have come against this multitude. O oh Lord, you are our God, and will not men prevail against you? All right. The third level of prayer, that what he said, we trust in you. Lord, we trust in you. Completely, Asa was surrendering to God, my friend. This is faith. This is faith. He completely surrendered everything to the Lord. 100%, not even 99.9%. 100%, he surrendered to the Lord. That is faith. That is indeed faith. And so we see, he came before the Lord, and he just surrendered himself to the Lord, and this Lord, we trust in you. Are we able to say that? Are you able to say in your moment of crisis, Lord, I trust in you. I believe in you. 
Now I trust that you will do this for me. Are we able to or we will waver? See, sometimes when we say, I trust and then we will be back of our mind, we have doubts. Say, Lord, I trust you, Lord, you will do this for me. But in the back of your mind, you will have these doubts and you will have you know, a lot of questions you apply it in which you are defeated. Faith is without wavering. Faith is something that you will not have doubts. Faith, you don't have fear. Right, with no questions. And here you find that King Asa came before the Lord and he totally surrendered and said, You are my. I trust in you, Lord. That's it. Let's turn to another portion of scripture in the book of Psalms. Psalms 40. Psalms 40, 40. Now we are not too sure what was the was the problem that uh, David was facing here. Okay, again we go back to David as the best example to us. Look at verse one. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Right? I waited patiently for the Lord. Two things. He waited patiently. Sometimes we are impatient. Sometimes we can't wait. We want answers immediately. We want to overcome tomorrow. Friends, I just want to give an analogy. Let's say if you have a wound in your hand. You're praying over it. Okay? And you're praying over it. Lord, I want this wound to be healed. Okay? And I pray this in Jesus' name. You say it. And I, and, and I trust in you, Lord God, that you will heal. Okay, you said it. But don't expect the next second the wound to disappear. It has to dry. It has to dry, all right, and the wood has to fall. The skin, the, the, the old skin will fall off. It will take some time. We have to wait. We have to be patient. We have to be, you know, of course, there are sometimes the supernatural happens. Sometimes the supernatural happens in the scripture. We've seen how a leper was just cleansed like that. Immediately gone. Okay? But there are times we need to wait patiently. And here David says, He inclined to me and heard my cry. Right? He trusted, he trusted the Lord so much. He trusted the Lord so much. Right? And then we continued in verse 2, we see, yeah? chapter 14, verse he brought me out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay, and he set my foot upon the rock, making my footstep firm. See, when you completely surrender, you completely surrender to the Lord, and you give yourself to the Lord, and you're believing everything A to Z, 100% to the Lord, let me tell you this. Okay? The Lord will take you out of the pit of destruction from the miry clay and you put your foot on a rock that will not sink. This is what the Lord will do. Okay? And this is what David was experiencing. Right? Look at the same chapter 40. Look at verse 4. How blessed is the man who made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud nor to those who lapse into falsehood. He hit the nail. You see, look at it. How blessed the man who made the Lord his trust that he would not turn to man, not turn to the proud, not to turn to anyone. Okay? How blessed is the man who made the Lord his trust. This is it. This is how it is. So let us trust the Lord in the most complex situation that you may be. Whatever the situation you may be facing at this moment, let us turn and understand the Lord and understand that when you wait patiently for Him, wait patiently, He will surely incline to you. He will surely hear your prayer. Friends, we are not just praying to someone who is up high in the sky eh? or some invaded into some wall or into some big line. No, we have a living Father is be a living father who walks with us. Remember, his name is known Emmanuel. God is with us. The word Emmanuel means 
God is with us. So, let us understand this, turning to God. Psalms 27 is another good psalm that we should read. Let's turn to it. Psalms 27, again is about David. And here David was actually running away from a very powerful king uh, uh, who was simply was jealous filled. He was jealous filled. Now look at verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Okay. The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evil doers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and enemies, they stumble and they fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not uh, tear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. This is David. He had a problem right in his hand. And look what he says. The Lord is my light and my salvation and who shall I fear? That's number one. And the Lord is the defense of my life. Friends, dying and living is in the hand of the Lord. It's not in your hand. Not the doctors tells me you can live for so many. I've seen many people who have doctors have said you're going to live for six months and then after that you're going to say bye-bye. All right. I've seen those people are living till now. We've seen people who don't listen to the men's voice. We hear to the, the Lord's voice. Okay? And we hear how God says He's the defense of our life. He who brought you into this world knows when to call you back. In the book of Ecclesiastes, all right, the preacher says that the time to be born, a time to die. The Lord knows. Okay, the Lord knows. But in between, if the devil brings sickness because of your own folly, all right, and he brings in between of your doubts and of your struggle, all right, and if you terminate, it's your problem. Because you never had trust in the Lord. So whatever, as I told you just now, what is in this universe is not out of the control of God. Okay. So here David knew his struggle. Okay, In the same chapter, Luke verse uh, 27 of Psalm, verse 14. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. See, his problem was not over yet. David's problem was not over yet, but he knew the Lord was here. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Oh, yes, wait for the Lord. This is it. Waiting upon the Lord is important, my friend. Waiting upon the Lord. Many of us cannot wait. Many cannot have the patience. And that's where we fall. So we need to wait and patiently wait. Don't expect overnight result. The Lord knows how to work. And here we see how God, when in King Asa's matter, it was very fast. Friends, when you trust the Lord completely <coughs> in every aspect, surely the Lord knows when you trust Him, not on men. I know a friend of mine who was a Panara, a Panolong Panara in a government department. Now, he was in a tight position, his boss on top is a Pangara, and he is a Pandolo, and then below. Right, left, right and center, corruption was taking place. So from the bottom, the corruption goes up higher and higher, all right? So each officer, and it, it has to pass through him in order to go to it. But he's a Christian. He's a Christian. And when he got this position as a Pandolo, when he was promoted, he saw the dirty side of it. Well, the corruption was going on. A lot of corruptions and a lot of things were taking place. So finally, he said to himself, I cannot go on. I cannot be a party to corruption. But he has he is already sucked in into the system. Okay? He said, no, I'm a Christian. I cannot take bribery. So what he did? Friends, one of the most hardest decisions he ever made. Having two sisters in university. Having a brother in uh, high school as well as he has got an aged parents it wasn't easy eh? whereby you have uh, two sisters in college financial commitment he's got a brother in high school 
aged parents that looked up to means medications, hospitals and all what not. He just quit. You know what he said to me? I prayed to my God and I trust my God and says, Lord, this is not the place I should be. So I have to quit. Now many a times we would say it's a very stupid decision. Okay, you look for a job, then you resign. Yes, that is the right reasonable, you know, rational thinking of anybody. All right? But this man was in a tight spot. And it was in a very tight spot. There was a, a, a contract has to be signed. It's a close tender. And those days, all of close tender. I mean, even till today also. He has to sign it because paid amount of money has been already given as a kickback. And he is supposed to get certain amount in his own account. He felt so disturbed. He said he couldn't sleep for three days. So disturbed, I don't need this money, I don't want this money. If I were to do this money, and then I will, you know, I will be, I will be sinning against God. So what happened? He just quit. He called it quits, and then he hung himself and came out. Friends, when you trust the Lord, he said, I purely trusted the Lord in this decision of mine. I trusted the Lord. So he trusted the Lord, and he resigned and came back. What happened? Just in two days, or two days, a famous financial adjust, I mean, auditing firm called him by phone. Called him by phone and said he never even put out any fillers yet. All right? Somebody has mentioned about him. They called him by phone. Is it possible that you could come over, over a cup of tea and we would like to offer you a job as the head of a department? The salary was three times higher than what he was getting. When you trust the Lord, my friend, when you trust the Lord in a very tight situation, you will see how God speaks to us, how God brings a complete healing. So don't trust in men. Trust in God. This is a key thing. Right? And so, in conclusion, my friend, we see five things. One, Asa prayed sincerely. He cried to God. He was a sincere and he prayed, you know, he prayed to God very sincerely and he cried unto God. It's a sincere prayer. It was an honest prayer. Secondly, he was very direct to the Lord. He did not beat around the bush. He was very direct to the Lord. He told the Lord, this is the situation. We have, don't have the strength, but they are powerful out there. Okay, Then he came to the point, I am helpless. I have no answer. Right? I am no answer. And the third, it was the Bible believing. Trust in thee. Despite the reality of the situation, this is real situation out there. He trusts his faith believing, my friend. We call it the faith believing. All right. Now, these are the level of prayer that he engaged in. He prayed sincerely. He was direct. He was to the point. And he had faith believing. And God answered. Yes. God answered King Asa. Let's go back to... Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 14 once again that's the whole chapter that we read okay and we're going to see look at verse 12 so the Lord now root, rooted the entire or outed the entire Egyptians before Asa and before Judah and the Ethiopian fled look the battle was not done by Asa not by the 580,000 men. None of them. It was the Lord who went and routed the entire Egyptians or the Kushites and they fled before the entire Asa, the entire Judah. That's what the word says. God answered them. God entirely rooted them out and you know, uprooted them and completely destroyed them. And the Lord did the battle for him. And the Lord will do the battle for us. This is it. When you go into the three level of prayer, 
Alright, that's what King Asa did. You find yourself the Lord doing the battle for you. You did not have to do the battle. Right? The Lord did the battle and routed the entire Egyptians, the Kushites. They were defeated. Imagine million men of commandos, 300 chariots of powerful men, all were routed by the Lord, not by the armies of Asa or Judah or Benjamin. None of them. They only just watched. And that's what our God will do to you. You just watch when you do a sincerely prayer before God. So my friend, what is your enemy? Is your enemy is your finance? Is your enemy has some relationship issues? Is your enemy is depression? Or is your enemy is life and death issues? Or is it some need? Then you will surely need to go this level of prayer. And the Lord our God will hear our prayer. When God can hear a mere man like us, King Asa, the Lord will hear our prayer too. He will hear us, surely. Okay. So let us understand here how God was merciful to a man who was sincere, who humbled and told the Lord, I'm helpless. And he trusted the Lord. Just trust the Lord. Friends, all this may sound fictional, but let me tell you this. Truly, when you go into an, a complex situation like, like Asa, when you see like an Asa, you will find, when you do this completely, you will see how God sent help from sin. You will see how God brings about change. You will see how God brings about a deliverance. You can see how God brings about healing into your life. And so, let us understand this. Let us know this, that God, our Lord, is a God who hears our prayer. When we go to Him in the time of need, like King Asa, He could have gone to men. So turn not to men. Trust not men. Trust not princes, as what the scripture says. Trust in the Lord, and the Lord will deliver you. Whatever it is, the Lord will deliver you. Okay? Let us pray.